Here are some examples on how to turn a, a science course into a full-on STEM course using robotics. Now, if you can get access to the LEGO Mindstorms Education EV Kits, uh, this is what a EV3 kit looks like. And you can see here it's about $412 for every two kids, and, and you can stretch that for three kids. I've used it with teams of two and three, and they work well uh, for both. Uh, and if you can only get one or two because of the price, having it as a center where kids rotate through it could work too. But take that with this STEM Robotics 101 uh, course that's completely free and choose the one for the EV3. And you can see here, these are all the units that are already created for teachers to pick and choose from. So depending on the course you're teaching and how much you wanna go into actual robotics and circuits and hardware or software and firmware, you could go that route, or you could just uh, pick and choose more of the science, which is one of the things that I did. Of course, being robotics and building with Legos, you've got ready-made engineering and a lot of good math uh, integrated in there where kids don't even know they're, they're doing math. Once students have a, a good foundation to build upon, uh, they have challenges that actually include using the what's called the EV3 brick, and that is the part that attaches to sensors and truly makes their Lego pieces into robots. So here's one challenge, the Sensabot challenge, and students have to program their robot to go to three lines, stop at each line, either lift, lift and drop uh, their arm there, and then turn around and go back into their starting point. Now this not only included engineering of building the, the robot device, it also included programming to get it to do what you just saw here. So this, this robotics curriculum uh, includes programming as well. And the LEGO Mindstorms uses uh, block style programming as in Scratch, so it's accessible to all students. Here's another uh, challenge that students did. And this team chose to have their robot uh, measure the temperature of water in two different cups. Now one cup had cold water, the other cup had uh, warm water, and what that robot is dropping into each cup is a temperature sensor. So these robots can also collect data for the students, and they built it. So this is uh, like real science, because real scientists have to program uh, their own methods of data collection. Well, these kids went beyond that. They built their own robot, attached their own sensors, and programmed it to do not just the data collection, but putting the sensor into each cup. Uh, it, it was a great project, and, and I enjoyed watching kids go through the process of building and programming. Now, I was fortunate enough to have access to a 3D printer in my classroom, and so part of our design challenges uh, included kids being able to design their own parts that they could uh, build on a program that comes with Windows 10 for free called 3D Builder. And then we would send that to the 3D printer where they could uh, print them and try them out. So what was printing there uh, was this drill bit. The team found out they made it way larger than they had thought. So even when you're using a ruler and seeing how much 10 or, or 15 centimeters is on the ruler, uh, it looks like it didn't translate until it printed and they saw, wow, that, that really is much bigger than we had anticipated. So there's a great math lesson and, and it just cost a little bit of plastic and a few hours of printing. Totally worth it. Now this student uh, built this to use with their robot to make a cutting uh, machine. And this worked out perfectly. This was a great design that they built on 3D Builder. Now, this team wanted to make a robot that actually wrote something. Um, so here they found that their first design uh, to hold a pencil, because they couldn't ha there were no Lego pieces that could actually hold a pencil, uh, this one didn't work. So they went back to the drawing board 
and they found that this design held a pencil quite well, and testing it found that this one worked a lot better. They still had to get the pencil to hold uh, more firmly, but once they got it, they were able to uh, draw an S on their paper.